Hello everyone. Uh, today we will discuss about a topic known as storage capacity of distribution reservoir. So in this topic we have to design the storage capacity. And before going to design the storage capacity, first of all let us know about the storage capacity. So what are the different type of storage of a distribution reservoir? There are three types of storage. First of all balancing storage, then breakdown storage, then fire storage. So first one is balancing storage. What do you mean by a balancing storage? The main and primary function of a distribution reservoir is to meet the fluctuating demand with a constant rate of supply from the treatment plant. So basically you know that uh, there will be variation in a day. In a single day there will be variation hour by hour. So for one hour the uh, demand may be higher, for one hour the demand may be lower depending on the supply. So easily uh, you can imagine that depending on the variation in demand there will be excess in demand and excess in supply type of situation. So uh, to maintain a balance between this excess demand and excess supply whatever type of storage capacity we require for a distribution reservoir that is known as the balancing storage. Okay. Next is breakdown storage. Breakdown storage means this type of storage is required. Uh, whenever there will be a breakdown in different type of machineries, different type of pumps and electricity used for the distribution system. So if the electricity or pump or the machineries require some kind of uh, repair work that means there is a breakdown condition. So in that duration of repairment, uh, repair work, uh, whatever amount of water needed to be supplied that will be maintained through this special type of storage and that storage is known as breakdown storage so whenever you are calculating the balancing storage as well as you have to maintain a separate breakdown storage that storage will be supplied in case of any kind of breakdown of electricity breakdown of machinery or pumps okay and that's why generally a provision is there that 25 25 percent of the total balancing storage is taken as the breakdown storage okay Next one is fire storage. If say for example you are supplying the water to a community to an area for domestic or different type of purposes and similarly whenever uh, you need to supply the water and there is a breakdown uh, of different machinery is occurring and also uh, simultaneously uh, you have to supply water to extinguish fire that means there is a fire breakout. Okay, so simultaneously you have to supply the water to the community, you have to uh, repair the breakdown of different type of machinery and simultaneously you have to supply water for extinguishing fire. So whatever amount of water will be supplied for extinguishing fire that is known as the fire storage. So these three types of storage are directly related to the distribution reservoir. So generally if, uh, related to the design purpose we only design the balancing storage and this breakdown storage can be taken from the provision standard provision is there and also the fire storage you can calculate for a community or for a city or town depending on the po population and depending on the uh, previous study on fire breakout. Okay now let us discuss about the uh, design of the capacity determination of capacity the balancing storage can be determined by two types of method first one is mass come method second one is analytical method mass come method is directly related to the graph paper plotting okay and analytical method means you have to apply some calculation you have to uh, uh, you have to make some table that is a tabulation work is there so regarding the mass curve method first of all what do you mean by a mass curve a mass curve means the uh, plot between accumulated inflow or outflow versus time that means time versus discharge that discharge may be inflow that discharge may be outflow inflow means the supply whatever type of flow is coming to your home that is the inflow that is supply from the treatment plant similarly demand outflow means the demand whatever amount of water you are using that is the demand that means it is outgoing from your storage so time versus inflow and time versus outflow basically time versus discharge this is known as the mass curve you have to plot 
uh, graph between this time versus inflow and time versus outflow then generally the uh, graph you will get having different type of curvature and uh, typical straight line then from that uh, plotting or from that graph you have to indicate excess demand situation and excess uh, supply situation and you have to take the maximum ordinate of these two cases maximum ordinate in case of excess demand maximum ordinate in case of excess supply similarly by this process uh, uh, using the mass curve you can calculate the capacity of a reservoir and in case of analytical process you have to uh, prepare a table there is a there is a uh, tabulation work is there so by analytical process you can uh, again uh, you can also calculate the capacity of the reservoir okay now let us have an example okay in the question you can see uh, it is given that a city with a population of 2 lakhs has to be supplied with water at 180 lpcd the probable hourly variation in the rate of demand is given in the following table so you can see the table uh, there are two columns first of all is period of time in hours and second table is uh, second column is about percentage of average hourly flow expected see very carefully not the value is given here the percentage of average hourly flow expected is given so for the and the data is given from first hour to the 24th hour that is for whole the day for first hour the required amount is 15 percent percentage is given second hour it is again 15 percent third hour 15 percent fourth hour 20 percent by this way for each and every hour the percentage average hourly flow expected is given in the table now determine the capacity of the balancing reservoir to be provided for balancing the variable demand against a constant rate of pumping using first option that is a if the pumping is to be done for all 24 hours and b if the pumping is to be done only from 5 am to 11 am again 12 uh, 2 pm to 8 pm okay also mention the rate of pumping in both the cases solve the problem by using mass curve method and analytical analytical method so you have to uh, calculate the capacity of the reservoir using mass curve as well as analytical method and there are two given conditions that pumping is done for whole the day and pumping is done for a limited hour or limited time duration let us uh, solve the problem first of all the first option that is mass curve method through this mass curve method first option will be the pumping is done for 24 hours and pumping is done for limited hour first of all the population in the question is given as 2 lakhs and the demand is 180 lpcd so average daily supply you can just calculate 180 multiplied by 2 lakh liter equal to 36 million liter per day daily supply this much amount required average hourly demand 36 million liter per day required so per day means for 24 hours it is required so average hourly demand you can calculate uh, 36 divided by 24 equal to 1.5 million liter per hour so maintaining the suitable supply uh, rate you have to supply the water to the community so average hourly supply should be 1.5 million liter per hour now the given demand pattern that is uh, corresponding to each and every hour what is the amount of or what is the percentage of demand is required that table was given and we have to convert that table using some suitable values uh, now you can see the uh, that uh, we have made a table the first column of the table is about the period of day in hours starting from 0 to up to 24 hours and the second column also the given data percentage of average hourly flow expected the value is from 0 hours that is 0 and corresponding each values are written here 15 15 15 20 up to the last one that is 15 percent now supply of water to be maintained in million liter per hour is 1.5 that is a uniform supply you are maintained okay now the percentage of average hourly flow expected was given now we have to convert this percentage into factor that is 15 percent means 0.15 factor again 15 percent means 0.15 factor similarly you can convert all the percentage in factors okay now for the uh, plotting of the mass curve we need the cumulative demand okay so you have the demand units 
uh, in factor demand in units that is a uh, factors of demand then you have to calculate the cumulative demand in factor so for zero hour it is required zero for fast hour it is required 15 percent or 0.15 factor cumulative will be previous one plus this one zero plus 0.15 ultimately 0.15 the procedure is similar to the uh, sieve analysis or gradation curve that is in that case you are supplying some material through each and every sieve and you are calculating the retain percentage again for the uh, drawing of the or formation of the gradation curve you have to calculate the cumulative retain percentage for each and every sieve similarly here for each and every hour you have to calculate the cumulative percentage of demand similarly cumulative percentage of supply so first of all demand cumulative demand for fast hour will be 0 plus 0.15 equal to 0.15 similarly for second hour again previous one was 0 0.15 and correspond uh, and the continuation that is for second hour is 0 0.15 total is ultimately 0 0.3 for third one 0.15 given and the previous one is 0.3 similarly by this way you can calculate the all the cumulative demand values and cumulative demand in million liter so you have calculated the all cumulative demand factors what are the factors you have to convert that factor into just million liter by multiplying this factor with the total amount of water required that is total amount of water required per day is, uh, for that day is uh, 36 million liter so uh, this cumulative demand factors are converted into cumulative demand in million liter unit by multiplying the factors with 36 million liter why 36 million liter because per day 36 million liter water is required so you just got the total uh, cumulative values for e corresponding to each and every hour now you have to calculate the cumulative supply in million liter you have the uniform rate of supply in third column that is for each and every hour you are maintaining 1.5 million liter per hour rate so for cumulative for first hour it is 1.5 for second hour again the previous one was 1.5 this one is 1.5 ultimately coming as 3 for third hour previous one is 3 and this one is 1.5 ultimately coming 3 plus 1.5 4.5 in this way you can calculate the cumulative supply now uh, whenever you are complete with you have completed the tabulation then you have to plot the graph of mass curve mass curve means the time versus inflow and time versus outflow that is time versus supply and time versus demand so you have the time first column period of day in hours that is the time versus first of all say demand curve so the sixth column cumulative demand in million liter take these two values period of day in hour first column and sixth column cumulative demand taking these two values you take a graph paper you just draw the different points then connect it you will get a curve with different curvature okay just different curvature then again this is the time versus demand curve again you have to plot time versus supply curve within this graph paper within uh, maintaining this same scale okay again period of day in hours that is the time versus cumulative supply that is the supply uh, gra uh, graph then for each and every point you will get the uniform rate of increase that means for the uh, mass curve of demand you will get a car curve having different curvature but for the mass curve of supply you will get a straight line maintaining a suitable slope you can see the graph also here the demand line is uh, given in blue color and the supply line is given in black color with break line okay so uh, whenever you see this graph uh, and also you can uh, just create this graph by on your own so uh, you can see at one section the supply line is above the demand line and another section the supply line is below the demand line okay now supply line is above the demand line means demand is lower supply is higher that means you are supplying some extra amount of water similarly when the supply line is below the demand line that means demand is higher but supply is lower that means you are supplying less amount of water only we need to consider these two sections 
the graph will give you two sections one will be of excess supply one will be of excess demand excess supply means the supply line is of above the demand line and that section from that section you can take the ordinate or you can take the value of amount of excess supply you are giving similarly from the section of excess demand you can calculate the ordinate value or directly the value of uh, water which comes under the excess demand section whenever you have calculated this excess supply and excess demand that is a value and b value directly add them you will get the total storage requirement so the process is very easy first of all you have to take all the data then you have to pro calculate the cumulative demand value similarly cumulative supply value then you have to plot time versus demand curve and time versus supply curve any curve can come there is a curve of different curvature or straight line anything can come then from the graph you will get two section at one section supply line will be uh, lower than the demand curve and at another section demand line will be lower than the supply section supply curve okay from the two section you can calculate the excess supply portion and excess demand portion that is a value and b value just add the a plus b this will give you the total storage capacity of the reservoir okay this is the process